We managed to build a GUI that had multiple things in it, and we were able to put them roughly where we want them to be and give them sizes that we wanted. But they didn't actually do anything for us. And when we ran it, we could select stuff. We could basically make the default types of, of actions happen, but we weren't able to control any logic from that. And that's what we want to be able to add. And this is done with events and handlers. One of the things about GUIs is in the console, all of our input from the user came from methods like read line and read int. And those methods are what we call blocking calls. So there was a console and those methods took input from standard input. Normally that was the keyboard, unless we were doing IO redirection and it came from someplace else. Normally it would sit there and it would wait for the user to type something in and hit enter. And all of the keyboard input went to one place. It would go to whatever the next method that was a read method, they called it. But when you have a GUI, things are a little bit different. For one thing, your mouse is active, and you also have the keystrokes that could go to any of multiple different locations. So we have to interact with our GUIs in a somewhat different way. So here is the code that we previously wrote. We have our button, our combo box, and our list view. And we want to make this so it is at least somewhat interactive. And the way that we do that, well, there are a few ways that we do it. One of the first ways we do it is we set handlers by assigning to properties that start with the word on. In the case of a button, because the primary thing that you do with a button is to click it, there is a member called on action. So we can take the button and it's on action. We need to set it equal to a function that is going to handle those events. Okay. In order to get this to work nicely, I need to put in a few more imports. So one of the imports that we're going to put in most of the time is something that does some general conversion capabilities and just helps us out. In Scala FF, FX, there is an includes, and we're going to bring in everything from includes. Also, it turns out that this on action needs a type called action event. And so we will define this as a normal lambda expression. I'll use the variable name E because it's an event. I could call it whatever I want, though. I could call it event if I wanted to be more verbose but I'm just going to say it's E, action event, rocket, and then I put in some curly braces for what I want it to do. We could start just to make sure that it works by printing out that the button was clicked. So if we come over here and we run this, we get our error because it can't find action event. So where is action event in the API. Well, let's bring up the API and let's ask it. Action event is in scalafx.event. So let's add an import for that. We'll import scalafx.event.action event. And that should make the code happy, assuming I typed it properly. Our window pops up. And when I click the button, you can see it prints out the message that we had. That's nice. That's kind of what we wanted to, to get there. Turns out that when you select things in the combo box, you also get an event that's passed to the action for that. So we can say combo box dot on action equals e dot action event, or e, not dot, colon, and I could put a print line in here too, but I don't want to just print stuff, I want to make these interact with the uh, GUI that we have in some way. So things that I could do, well, I could make it so that clicking the button or the combo box alters things in the list. So <clears throat> perhaps when I select something from the combo box, I want whatever I selected to be added onto the list. So how would I do that? Well, 
it turns out that the list view has inside of it a the, the things that are inside of it are called items. Now the items is actually a what's called a property and we'll get to the, the meaning of properties later that's wrapped around the actual collection of items. In order to get to the collection itself I call the apply method. Uh, apply winds up kind of being a special method in Scala. We're not going to treat it as so right now but if you continue to learn more about Scala uh, basically when we talk about proper object orientation we'll probably go into detail about what exactly the apply method does. But I can on this apply I can add stuff to the collection by calling plus equals. So this will add something into my items. And what do I want to add? Well I want to add whatever was selected from the combo box. To get that I ask the combo box what was selected. That is stored in something called the selection model. And once again the selection model is a property that wraps around something so I'm going to call the apply method on that and then I can specifically ask it for the selected items or item singular. Let's go ahead and let's run that see if that line of code is happy. It definitely compiles. So what happens if I select Scala here? Scala gets added to the list. Haskell? Haskell gets added to the list. Okay, so that is working. Our interactions with this combo box add things onto our list. You'll also note that the list magically gets a scroll bar so that if it is too long we can scroll up and down. What could the button do? Well, perhaps a good thing for the button to do since the combo box is adding stuff to the list. Maybe the button should be able to remove stuff from the list. We could have it so that the button will remove anything that happens to be selected in the list. And technically we could remove everything. So I'm going to break this into two pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the things that are selected from the list. So just like the combo box has a selection model, the list view has a selection model. It's a property, so I call apply on it. And in the case of the list view, that selection model can allows you to select multiple things. So we'll call get selected items, plural, and that will give us all of the things that were selected in the list. Now what I want to do is I want to change the list of items So I'm just, whoops, list view dot items. I'm just going to set it. So down here we did a plus equals because we were adding stuff onto it. I'm just going to, to set it to a new value. And the value that I want is everything that was there before, list view dot items dot apply to get all of those values out. And then you might remember from when we talked about collections, there is a method that basically subtracts out stuff from a collection, and it's called diff. So I can diff that with selected, and that will take all of the items and remove from it the things that are in the selected collection. What remains will then be put into the items. So I'll wind up getting everything that hadn't been selected. Let's try that out. We run it. It compiles, so it's happy with that. We can add a Java and a C++. And then maybe I want to get rid of AWT. Looks like we have this set up for single selection now. Oh. If I click it, AWT goes away. If I click that, Java goes away. So our removal code is working just fine. Now the only thing we can't do is right now this is not actually allowing us to select multiple items at one time. We go look in the API, but we'll leave that as a later task or a task for the viewer.